Hello class and welcome to the session. In this session, we'll look at three-phase transformers. So when you're talking about three-phase transformers, we talked about how single-phase transformers configure. We're going to be doing this study again this session, comparing three-phase transformers with single-phase transformers to understand the fundamentals and apply them in three-phase transformers. So this topic is going to be specific to vector groups. To understand it, we will do a small demonstration with a simple experiment through a simulator and understand how it affects your vector configuration of your primary and secondary on your three-phase transformer. Let's go to the presentation. Now look at the presentation, you will notice that uh, the first question I've asked you is, do transformers have polarity? The answer is yes. Now if you look at a transformer, you will not be able to identify its polarity. To identify its polarity, either the manufacturer should have given you a marking saying that this is your dot of your primary and this is your dot of your secondary to say which coils are coupled how internally. So you could do an experiment to identify it. So let's do a simple experiment to identify the polarity of a transformer and see how it could affect the way a three-phase winding can be configured and how it affects its vector group. So what we would need, we would need a single-phase transformer, a pulse generator for its power source for the primary, current limiting resistor on your primary and secondary, a digital scope to identify its voltage and current curves, and a switch to turn the circuit on and off. So this is how the circuit is going to be connected. So you have your uh, pulse input from your power source, which is going to be as a, which is going to consider it like an AC input. Transformers do transform AC, but in this case, to understand the polarity, we're going to use a DC pulse. Uh, so it's going to be having an AC component in it, which is the pulse component. And you have a switch. You have your current limiting resistor, 100 ohms, your transformer, and your 300 ohms on your secondary. So you're going to notice a few things, direction, magnitude of the primary, secondary current and voltages, and the residual current that flows in the circuit once the switch is opened or the pulse is dis disabled. Now to understand it, let's switch to the simulator. Now your simulator is here. Yeah. So in a second now you see you have your pulse input coming in from your pulse. So you see the pulse coming in, you, so you have your primary voltage curve and your current curve. The green is voltage, yellow is current. and the voltage goes to zero to maximum, maximum to zero. And you would notice that secondary two has a positive pulse. So I have a positive input, a positive output. Um, to understand it, let's look at the simulator in detail. So you have your positive input here. So the current flows here and your secondary current flows here. So there's a positive green pulse in the secondary and an yellow color current that flows. So the switch is closed, open. You still have the green current voltage pulse, but you don't have a current pulse. But instead, on your secondary, you have a voltage and current that's dying out. This dying out current is because of the stored current in the inductance of the secondary coil. That has a small current flowing. So the moment the switch closes again, the current starts flowing in your primary, and the current and voltage starts flowing in your secondary as pulses again. So this switching has some surges and you notice that there is some AC component and DC component here. So understanding it is through the practicals. You don't have to understand that everything uh, as such. Why truth is we study the fundamentals, it's application of fundamentals. It's never, nothing is flat. There's always a small spike, there's a surge. And the way transformers work, any change in the secondary, the primary would affect the secondary, any change in the secondary would affect the primary instead. So understanding it is in the practical aspects, yes, in the diagram in a circuit, might be in, in the theoretical diagram, it would be a straight line. In the practical diagram, there are a lot of changes to be understood, and this simulator explains it perfectly. Okay, so now we're going to do a small change. I'm going to edit the configuration of my transformation. I'm going to swap the secondary winding and see what happens. The moment I swapped the secondary winding, the secondary pulse became a negative, which means now if you notice there's a dot here, there's a dot here. So now we're talking about the configuration of my second, or my primary secondary winding has been reversed. And so the current direction has reversed, so you have a neg negative pulse. Now if I do put it in the normal configuration without flipping over the secondary, you need to understand what, what does this mean? Ideally now the dot would be here and the dot would be here. In the normal configuration. If a positive current flows into the primary, the same current would continue, I mean you would see the same amount of power being transferred in the same direction, which means if the current flows, sorry, um, if the current flows, uh, oh, sorry, 
If the current flows in this direction in the primary, the same current will flow in the same direction in the secondary. But now you see that the residual current is flowing in a different direction because the circuit is being configured that way, like a tank circuit. So it resonates, and that's the reason it's the, the current, residual current that you see flowing in a different way. Now, understanding this, understanding this is critical. So if this is positive and this is negative, a current flows through the primary coil. It would result in a positive here and a negative here, resulting a current flow through any other circuit externally in the same direction. If the current is clockwise in the primary, the current is clockwise in the secondary. That is what the dot rule denotes. So if I reverse that configuration by having the secondary configuration swapped, secondary, which means secondary polarity swapped, if I have a clockwise current in the positive, I would have an anti-clockwise current in the negative, and this is what is expressed with this dot rule. So, now the truth is, using a small DC pulse, we're able to identify and prove to say that there is a polarity in your output. Now, instead of having uh, a sine wave, sorry, just I mean a pulsed wave, let's try to give it an AC input. So you see the phase sequence, positive, negative, positive, negative, and this is what happens when I give an AC input. And uh, let's try to see if I can edit it again and so I try to change its frequency. So the voltage is 10 volts, the frequency is say mega 50 hertz. As in India, and now you have a frequency change that changes your output frequency. Same frequency is maintained from primary to secondary. Now if I put a DC source here, input, can you see something happening? There's a constant current flowing through the primary. There is no current proportionally going through the secondary. But there's a residual current that's dying out because there's no AC component in my there's a current, heavy current flowing in the primary. There's no current flowing proportionally in the secondary. This is getting saturated. Now instead, now I go back and put, change the source from a DC source. Sorry, look at the source. I want to edit the source. And I make it, let's put a triangular wave. A triangular wave is like a sine wave. Let's see what happens. You see it? The voltage and current curves are different. But learning is this. Is similar. There is a polarity. There's a positive, a positive. Let's try to edit it again and make it false to was earlier. Yeah. Now make it back to default configuration without swapping the secondary. Understand how it does affect the way transformer works. 50 hertz pulse, change it, play with it. See, the learning is important. If you want to have a phase angle change, you can introduce it. If you want a DC offset, you can introduce it. If you want to change your, um, if you want to add a noise component into the in, into your input, you can do that. Uh, you want to put a sort with wave, and see how it responds. Yes, you could. So the most important thing is your learning. So the learning is critical here. When you have the right learning, what transformers can do? This is most important. Now, how does this affect a three-phase transformer? Instead of having a single winding here, I have three sets of windings. Instead of having one primary, I'm going to have three sets of primaries. How am I going to connect these two, three windings together? It could be a star configuration, a delta configuration. I can have one coil's polarity reversed. I could have all the coils polarity reversed. I could have it configured any way possible. So those combinations is what this topic is all about. So those configurations are called the vector groups. Let's go back to the presentations to understand it in detail. So now look at the presentation. You would see that we have um, the polarity of the secondary spike to have a representation on the way a transformer operates with the simulator. So there is a DC component that we gave in the pulse, the AC component in the pulse, the AC component was transformed, 
the dot conversion said if I reverse the polarity of the secondary, there's a reverse in the neg uh, there's a reverse in the direction of the negative spike. There is a change in direction with the identification of the direction of the spike with a simple transformer. So now when you go to a manufacturer and say I want a transformer, he will ask you what is your configuration, what is your requirement, and how the primary and secondary windings are connected can be expressed with a phasor symbol and a phasor diagram. A phasor symbol would be something like this. YT11. What is it express saying that how the primary is kind of star connected and how the secondary star connected? An expression of positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And the phase angle between the primary and secondary is expressed with a symbol. And that's the, this is how the, the terminal markings are and the phase uh, displacement diagram. And this is how the wiring connections are. And that is an expression of how you can express it. This is the diagrammatic winding connection and the phase of symbol. So what do we learn? Vector Groups is the International Electrotechnical Commission of categorizing high voltage windings and low voltage windings and their configurations in three phase transformers. What changes? The phase angle changes. There's, there's phase delay in your primary the voltage and currents and that would have a lead or lag and that would have a change. Secondary polarity of your changes, so polarity of the winding. So all these changes are how this is connected and this is how it's expressed for example in this case uh, a, a Y connection for your HV and a delta connection on an LV with a 30 degree lead is denoted by YD11. We show that in the diagram too. So this simple experiment expresses the change in the connection and its effect on the secondary output and how it influences a three phase transformer and its connection. This is vectors and how a vector representation of a simple connection can result in how uh, three-phase transformers can operate and are configured. So understanding it is important in the practical aspect. There is a polarity of the transformer and how it's connected and the phase angle changes between the primary and secondary do affect the way transformers are configured. So this is the vector groups. We saw that where the simple expression of polarity and how they can be configured. Let's look at it and look some more about it in the next session. So if you have any other questions, you can feel free to drop me a message and I'll be able to answer your questions. The most important thing is understanding the concepts practically. And uh, if you want to do your own experiments, you need time to have time to come back to college. You will do those experiments. But now, if you have any questions, drop me a message and I'll be able to explain it with a video or a theory lecture to cover your understanding of the subject before we have any examinations this semester. So that's it for now. Thank you and have a great day.